Hi everyone. So um, we are going to do some examples on rotational kinematics. So here is our first example. We have the disc in this figure is rotating about its central axis like a merry-go-round. <clears throat> the angular position uh, theta of a reference line on the disc is given by theta is equal to negative 1 minus 0.6t plus 0.25t squared with t in seconds, theta in radians, and the zero angular position as indicated in the figure. <clears throat> If you could like, you could translate all this into chapter 2 notation by momentarily dropping the word angular from angular position and replacing the symbol theta with the symbol x. What you then have is an equation that gives the position as a function of time for one dimensional motion of chapter 2. So for letter A, we want to graph the angular position of the disk versus time t from th negative 3 seconds to 5.4 seconds. And we want to sketch the disk and its angular position reference line at t equals negative 2 seconds, 0 seconds, and 4 seconds, and when the curve crosses the t axis. Whew, man, that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, um, so for this one, uh, it's kind of tedious, but you basically, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug in um, times from negative 3 to 5.4 seconds for your disk um, into that equation that they give you to in order to find what our angular position is at those different times. Now, I'm not going to do every single one like, you know, I, I did previously. <laughs> um, so... <clears throat> Here is our um, axis. Each box here is going to be one. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six. And then what we end up getting is at a time of t equals three seconds, sorry, negative three seconds, when you plug that into the equation here, you get 3.05 radians. Now, I actually converted all of these also to degrees, just because you guys are usually used to seeing degrees more than you are <clears throat> to seeing radians. So what we end up getting here is... Um, at time t equals negative three seconds, we get 174 radians, and that's our highest, um, sorry, not radians, 174 degrees, and that's our highest number there. And then we go all the way down uh, to a negative 77.4 degrees, and that's at time t equals one second. Again, I plugged in all these before I filmed this video, because if I plugged in all of them with you, it would just take forever. <laughs> this video would be very long. <laughs> so because of that, I'm going to have each of these boxes be 30. So I get 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and then this is 180 up here. Um, so 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180. And then <clears throat> we're going to start plugging in our numbers. So when you plug in a time t equals negative three seconds, you get a angle in degrees when you convert to degrees, because of course, when you get your angle, it is in radians here. But when you convert to degrees, you get 174 degrees. So I'm going to put that in. And that's negative three. So that's about here. And then when at negative two seconds, you get 68.76 degrees. So that is about right here-ish. And then um, <clears throat> at time t equals negative one second, you get negative 8.6 degrees. And again, this is uh, negative, sorry, negative 30, negative 60, negative 90. So we get negative eight which is about 8.6, sorry, negative 8.6, which is about right here. And then at zero, <clears throat> time t equals zero, you get a negative 57.3 degrees, which is about right here. And then at time t equals one second, you get negative 77.4 degrees, which is about here. Um, negative, sorry, at two seconds, you get negative 68.76 degrees, 
which is about right here. Um, at three seconds, negative 31.5 degrees, which is about here. Um, four seconds, 34.4 .4 degrees, which is about here. And then 5.4 seconds, you get 174 degrees again. So that's way up here where we were before. <clears throat> so you can see that we have kind of a parabolic curve here. So if I draw my curve in, look something like that. <laughs> I got a little shaky down there. <laughs> um, now it says we want to graph the angular position of the disk versus time t, uh, blah, blah, which we did. And then we want to sketch the disk and its angular position reference line at negative two seconds, zero seconds, four seconds, and when the curve crosses the t-axis. So what they mean by that is we want to look at the disk and where the position is at those times. Now at negative two seconds, we can see that we're up here. And that was when I said the position, angular position is 68.76 degrees. Now that's a positive, so that means it's going to be above the positive x-axis. That's where the um, angles measured from. So if we're looking at a disc kind of like the one that's drawn below there, here's our disc here, and then this is like our reference line, and then that positive would be like here, that positive 68.76 degrees. Now if we look at it in like a three-dimensional sense, is that correct? Yeah, um, that would be up this way from our reference line. So this is like an angle of zero, and then we have a positive 68.76 degrees. <clears throat> At a time of t equals four seconds, that is right here when we are at, uh, when you plug that in, 34.4 degrees, four seconds. Again, here's our disk, here's our reference line, and that's a positive 34.4, so it's about right there. And then also when we cross, oh, zero seconds, I skipped that one, my bad. Um, zero seconds is a negative 57.3 degrees, so that line is down here because it's negative, it's below that x, positive x. And then last but not least, when it crosses the line right here, and that is when our angular position is at um, a position of zero, which is just where the reference line is. So that's what our positions look like. What the positions look like. Um, for letter B, it says at, this is so messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, for letter B, it says at what time T minimum does our angle theta with respect to time reach the minimum value shown in that figure? What is that minimum value? So the minimum value, that's what they're talking about is this value right here. So remember, when we, whenever we talk about a minimum value um, or a maximum value sometimes, but um, we're talking about when the derivative of the function is equal to zero, because you can see that if we're taking the derivative of this function here, we're taking the slope of the line. Now at that minimum value, the slope is zero. So what we wanna do is we wanna take derivative and set equal to zero to find the time, and then we have to plug it back into the um, function of theta with respect to time in order to find what that minimum value actually is. So we know that the derivative of the function of theta with respect to time, or our angular position with respect to time, is angular velocity, which is omega. So when we do that, we're taking the derivative of this. So the derivative of negative 1 is 0. The derivative of negative 0.6t is just points, uh, sorry, negative 0.6. And then the derivative of point, positive 0.25t squared, I'm going to multiply that 0.25 by 2 and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So I get positive plus 0.5t. So that's my derivative. And then in order to find that time t, I set this equal to zero. So we get negative 0.6 plus 0.5t. Um, add 0.6 to both sides. And then solve for time. And we get 1.2 seconds for our time. Now, in order to find what that minimum value is, we are then going to plug that back into our original equation. So we get theta 
with respect to time is equal to that negative 1 minus 0.6 t plus 0.25 t squared. Plugging that in, we get theta with um, at time 1.2 is equal to negative 1 minus 0.6 times 1.2 plus 0.25 times 1, sorry, 1.2. <clears throat> squared and we end up getting our minimum value is equal to a negative 1.36 radians and then if we convert that to degrees we get a negative 77.9 degrees for letter B. <clears throat> and then last but not least we have C and D. We have graph the angular velocity omega of the disk versus time from t equals negative 3 seconds to t equals positive 6 seconds. Sketch the disk uh, and indicate the direction of turning and sine of omega at t equals negative 2 seconds, 4 seconds, and t minimum. So this is another one where you have to plug everything into that equation. And that equation that I mean omega with respect to time, our angular velocity with respect to time, and we found that to be negative 0.6 plus that 0.5 t. So what you do here is you're just going to plug it all in, and then you end up getting all of the values. Now again, I'm not going to plug every single one in because I already did that for you because we're going to be here forever if I do it. This again is negative 1, negative 2, negative three, and then we're going to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I did it so that each of these is one, so, or sorry, a half. So we get negative one and negative two. And then let's plot our points. So at a time of t equals negative three seconds, you get an angular velocity of negative 2.1 radians per second when you plug that in. So at negative three seconds, oh, I guess I didn't put that on the graph, whoops. We'll just skip that one. <laughs> negative two seconds, we get a negative 1.6. So negative, oh no, I do have that on the graph, my bad. Um, <laughs> So that was negative 2.1 for negative 3. Negative 2.1 is here. And then I get a negative 1.6 for negative 2. Negative 1.6 is here. Negative 1.1 for negative 1, which is here. Uh, negative 0.6 for 0. I got a negative 0.1 for 1 second. You can kind of see a pattern here now. I got 0.4 for 2 seconds. I got 0.9 for 3 seconds, 1.4 for 4 seconds, 1.9 for 5 seconds, and then 2.4 for um, 6 seconds. So we can see that it's a nice straight line as we go up. Um, and then they want to sketch, they want us to sketch it at negative two seconds, four seconds, and t minimum. All right, negative two seconds is right here. So if we sketch that, all we're going to do is sketch the disk and indicate the direction of turning. So remember, with our angular acceleration, when we have a negative value for that, all we're talking about is the direction of our angular velocity or the direction of rotation here. Um, now, when we have an ang a negative angular velocity, that is a clockwise direction. Remember, negative is clockwise, positive is counterclockwise. So that means that we're turning clockwise like that. Um, at four seconds, that's right here, we are positive in our angular velocity. So that means we are turning counterclockwise. All right, and then t minimum. Oh, that was when our minimum, um, our, at our minimum position, remember, and that was when we stopped momentarily. So at our minimum, that's when our disk is stopped. So omega equals zero at the minimum, like that. And then last but not least, it says d. Use the results in part A through C to describe the motion of the disk from t equals negative three seconds to t equals six seconds. Now what happens here is at negative three seconds, the disk starts out at a positive 
um, angular position of 3.05 radians or 174 degrees. And we can see that here it is turning in the clockwise direction. Now what happens is it slows down in the clockwise direction. And then once it gets to that negative 77.9 degrees or negative 1.36 radians, it slows to a stop and then starts turning in the counterclockwise direction. So we have a positive angular velocity and then it speeds up in the positive direction until it gets to a position of a positive 3.05 radians or 174 degrees at time t equals 5.6. So that's kind of the gist of what happens to this disk in this motion. Now it's very tedious to go through a problem like this, I know, but it is important to think about what's really happening um, when they're giving you a positive, you know, angular position or a, or a negative angular position or a positive angular velocity or a negative angular velocity and where your disc stops and turns around and why that happens. Okay. So, um, another thing I would like you to think about is what's the direction of angular acceleration here, right? Now we can see that we know acceleration will be the slope of the velocity curve. So if this is the angular velocity curve, then we can see that slope is positive. So our angular acceleration will be positive. Okay, so that's another thing that you want to think about. And just like they said in the very beginning of this problem, if it helps to just think of these as position and velocity and acceleration, then you can do that too. It's just we're throwing that angular term and these new variables in, but it's really the same type of motion.